Welcome to Farm Girl Studios. Do, 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 do. Uh, do, 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 do. Welcome to Farm Girl Studios, my sweet chicks. I am Dana Winston, and with me today is Simon, my Hi. handsome son, and my sidekick. And today we are going to showcase for you um, some dotting of some art stones that we have that we've made already. And we're going to be participating in the Experience True Colors Challenge, which is on Instagram. If you're interested to know more about that, you can follow them at Experience True Colors. And what they did was they gave us a fall palette to work with. And they're challenging artists and crafters everywhere to use these particular colors in any kind of art form that they choose and submit their entries. And we want to be a part of it because it's really fun to do. And we like challenges, right? Hell yeah. Yes. So um, hang out with us for a little bit and watch us work and see how we do some things. Um, before I start, I'm going to take a sip of this. Um, this is my Herbalife Formula One shake. I am starting shakes this week. Since when? Since today. It's time. Um, and these are so delicious. They make, like when you go on the shake program, I can't wait to drink these. I don't mind not eating. But it's delicious. Shout out to Nicole Cavalli, Herbalife coach and um, specialist. If you want to get hooked up with some stuff, let me know. I'll hook you up. Send me a DM. Don't mm. tell me your post. We're gonna put this down now. Hmm? Are you gonna post this on Instagram? I'm certainly am. I'm gonna embarrass him. The videos can't um, be excuse this me, long. I'm all arted up, so this is um how we roll here in the studio. So no Instagram videos can't be this long. I can put it I can put it on after, right? No. I'm gonna put it on YouTube. I'll put it on YouTube and we'll do a link. Oh, okay, good. Good, he says. Do I have a do I have a YouTube account yet? Yeah, You're my editor. Yeah, I like to edit this. Huh? Like Maybe, edit. no, we don't need music. So anyway, here are the colors that we are going to use and they are beautifully curated. We have a grayish light blue. We have like a succulent green color, almost like celery a little bit. We have, this one's called sunflower, which I love. It's like a little bit of marigold and butter yellow together. And it is like a sunflower, it's beautiful. This one's called warm buff. This one is raw sienna, maybe burnt sienna, and this one is dried clay. We have them in our wells, and I've already prepared them. I've already put what we use when we are dotting the Liquitex pouring medium. Any kind of acrylic will do when you are um, using um, acrylics to uh, paint dots. And um, this pouring medium is, is like liquid platinum. It actually, it absolutely will make any kind of consistency in your paint uh, ideal to create perfect dots. And as I start, I'll show you what the consistency should look like when you're making one. So I'm gonna switch this here down to look down at what I'm doing. I hope the lighting is okay. So here's my art rock here. Oh, we also have one of these which maybe we'll do and we'll see how long it takes me to do this. Usually I do these on time lapse so I don't worry about time because just when you think you can't go any further with a time lapse, he messed up. He says he messed up. He goes too fast. I know. Go slower. Well, how do I like, can I erase it or whatever? You can wipe it clean and paint it over again. All right. All right, so we can't play the music while we're doing the video. I can add it in. You can add it in later? Yeah. All right, what kind of music should we add in? Marshmallow music. Oh, I do like marshmallow. I do like that guy. All right, so what I'm using today when we're dotting these, I use both. I, I like to use mandala stones, which are um, almost an epoxy type of cast. They're called stones, but they're really not. Um, they're very sturdy, very rigid, and they come in graduating sizes so that you can make all different, all different sizes of dots in your work. These um, are on Etsy. These are a little bit expensive. These I think were around forty dollars for a set of twelve. They're double sided and they come. They range from very, very tiny pinprick to big fat dot. 
and which we have one right here, like this giant one, which when you're doing it, this is pretty big. And I use those all the time. Today, what I'm going to do is use these silicone dotting tools. And these are from Russia and I got them on Etsy and um, Francis, one of my students was using them and she really enjoyed them. I've been using them on and off, but today I'm really gonna work with them and, and just break them in. Um, the key to dotting is when you're when you're pressing down on your on your surface, you don't you don't want to slam down like that. You want to oh, gently gosh. gently let the dot almost drip off the, the tool onto the surface. Look at this. Look what my son just did. Wonderful. I, I thought you were gonna make fun of now me. Now use a manicure tool and do dot, smaller dots around it. <clears throat> yes, sir. Do I look like a star to you? No. Uh -huh. It's quite, it is a joke. I'm sorry. It's all right, babe. All right. So what I'm going to do here is looking at my color palette. I um, I mean, and I don't think we can go wrong here. These are such gorgeous colors. But when you're when you're dotting and you're making concentric circles, you definitely want to vary your sizes and your colors and the color contrast as well to give it visual impact. So um, right now I'm just going to kind of go for it and see what we can do. I'm going to use this beautiful blue here. When you make stones at home, which I do, and that's another class that um, I will show you um, or present to you at one point, you use molds and gypsum powder. Gypsum is a type of cement, and you mix it with a, I think it's a 38 to 1 ratio, something crazy like that, and, um, or 38%, whatever. And the molds themselves allow you to uh, cast a tiny dot which on these art stones shows you the center point, which is fantastic because you don't need to measure them. The hearts do not, but the um, round stones do, including the small one, right? Did you have a dot on there, on that small one? Mm -hmm. Anyway, it makes like very interesting, I mean, a very easy and we don't have to measure it out to find the center dot. So when you make your center dot, you wanna use a larger tool, a larger size tool to establish your center. And I used that blue there and it came out very nicely. You want to have it almost have like a little um, raised dot in the center that shows the, um, the texture of the paint there. I don't know if you can see sideways, but it gives a nice effect. And when you do that and you have a dry piece, not only is your piece colorful and beautiful, but you also have texture to it and it makes it um, very nice to hold and touch and feel. It's a really nice um, added effect to your piece. So I have my manicure tool now, which are um, a dime a dozen. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them from DH Gate. I like to order in bulk from China. So China. I will order, um, I don't know, 50 at a time. I get a very cheap rate and if you'd like to buy some from me, just let me know. Come on over. I'll give it to you for cost. Don't tell my husband that he gets mad. He says, don't give it everything away, but whatever. So I have, I have the center dot here. And what I want to do is with my manicure tool, I'm going to make dots at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Six o'clock. That's nine to me, three to you. And three o'clock. And I just made like a, a quadrant there. So you can see where I am with that. And this is a smaller piece, so I don't need a grid. And when you're a beginner, you want to use a grid. But I'm, I do free form, and this is basically how I work to keep things as even as possible and save myself time and aggravation later on. So you can see with these four quadrant dots that I put down, I'm assessing the size of the dot that I use with the manicure tool. And I'm looking at the spaces in between. I'm trying to figure out how many dots I can fit in in between those two. And I don't feel very comfortable putting two in between. I can certainly fit them, but I'm just gonna go for one now and I'm gonna put those in the center and I'll embellish it a different way. The key to making these look really beautiful often, and, and again, it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder and it's personal taste, but the key to making these really nice is getting the dots as close together without running into each other and without getting the shape in. Right, Sai? He's doing a pinwheel and I can't wait to show you. He's really good at this. So I have these, these sunflower dots around here that I put down and I want to give a little more 
put a little more action in there. So I'm going to take a smaller side of my manicure tool and in the spaces in between, just at the top, I'm going to create a little dimension there in this concentric circle and put a smaller dot in between the larger dots. And again, I'm not pressing hard at all. I am gently touching the tool, the, the end of the stylus to the stone. And it just leaves a perfect little circle there. Now this looks a little bit wild there, but you'll see as we go on that um, it will look much more even and concentric as we go on. One thing I tell all my students, and I repeat this constantly, is that when you're doing this, you're going to see little imperfections, you're gonna get aggravated with yourself, but most of the things that are a little bit uneven here, you can absolutely correct in the next concentric circle. And when the piece is done, you absolutely are not going to see, or, or what, what happens is when you look at a finished piece with all the colors and all the shapes on it and all the geometry, your brain does not want to seek out mistakes. It's enjoying the whole pattern and the whole, the whole picture that it sees. So you may notice the tiny imperfections, but um, people won't, and um, you might find them hard to, difficult to find later on, because they really aren't as huge a problem as you might think they are when you first see them. So I'm using a larger dotting tool now again, a little bit smaller than the center dot. And again, I want to create visual impact through varying color and sizes. And I'm using the buff color, which is what looks like a soft muted pink. Definite great fall colors or early fall colors in this in this palette. So as you can see, I put, I'm getting messages. As you can see, I put the um, dots, the, the pink dots just above, if you're looking at a radius from the center point outward, I'm putting the dots just above the initial dots that I put down. And the, the smaller dots that I use to embellish around that are now nestled in between. It's a nice look. Let me find, let me see, I'm going to do a little bit smaller now. I'm going to come with this, this light terracotta color and I'm going to put some dots in there. Now, when this is finished and it's dry, you can come back and put dots on top of dots on top of dots. The design possibilities are absolutely endless. And the thing I love about dotting is that you can feel like an artist, even if you're not. What you doing? I don't if you're know. not professionally trained, you can absolutely enjoy art and make beautiful things with a few short lessons and some practice, which is what I do. I'm not sure this is gonna work or not, but I'm not sure. sure what's gonna work, Bubba. Trying to do something. I don't know what I'm doing. Though. So I'm coming around here and I'm making, making larger dots with a larger tool. And again, these acrylics, the consistency is critical when you're um, using your paint. I love to use Liquitex paints um, just because they are, their consistency and their opacity and, and the, the way they work and, and the way they respond is just beautiful and once you use them it's really hard to go back to using other things but i also like using um, craft paint which is folk art acrylic i like this brand and i also like to use deco art and um, but what i find is that they they need help with consistency and the beautiful thing about using any kind of acrylic paint is that you can add mediums to, to anything you're using and make it work for whatever purpose you're using it for. There's fabric mediums, so I could use regular acrylic paint, put fabric medium, medium in them, and suddenly I'm able to paint on fabric and have them stay on and not wash out or flake or crack. There are um, gloss mediums to make your paint extremely, we have a visitor. 
We have a, a, a special guest. Sophia just walked in. And she is a master daughter. And she is eyeing up Simon's work over there. So it's Labor Day today, and my husband has some people out in the barn, and the family's just having a down day, getting ready for the start of school in a couple of days. Right, so you can see I chose the yellow there, and now I'm going to go back to the blue, and I'm going to prepare to what we refer to in dotting classes as walking it out. Now, as I'm, as I'm going out to my concentric circles, everything I do, I want to have it with a perspective. The perspective needs to go toward the center of the piece. So if you can see, I'm gonna dot here now. I wanna make sure that the dot is lined up between the other dots in the center here so that it looks even. And I wanna do that all around to the best of my ability. It doesn't always work perfectly, but that's the goal. It just makes the design more even and pleasing to look at. So I'm using a little bit of a larger dotting tool right now, and I'm trying to isolate some dots around the circle away from the other dots around it. See, that I didn't have enough paint on that, so I'm gonna come back and redot it. And I am going to walk these out. When I say walk them out, I use a dotting, a manicure tool. Where is it? Where is it? Right there. Little tiny stylus, little ball there. They come in various sizes. Um, but when you're dotting around, usually it <clears throat> doesn't matter too much. And I think it's time for, I'm going to save this very dark color here for top dotting because I don't think it's going to show up and, and be um, enough of an impact on the black background. I'm going to use the pink and I'm going to start here. All right, and, and forgive me because I'm going to go backwards. But what I do is I take my stylus with a little bit of the, the paint on it and I put a top dot in perspective and make a 12 o'clock in perspective to the center. So I put it at 12 o'clock. <coughs> and then what I want to do is go around that dot and let my paint run out off, off the stylus and I'm creating smaller dots around and I give it dimension. Now I don't want to go back and finish the dots around this one. I want to go around the whole the whole stone in this manner first and do the whole right side of that row of dots or that circle because if you do not if you if your dots happen to be a little bit too nudged closely together the other side will not look uneven if you run into it and all the other ones do that. If I don't make sense, I apologize, but just trust me on this. Do all the right side first from 12 o'clock down to six o'clock. And then you're gonna go back and do from 11 down to seven or whatever on the other side. We're not really going to six o'clock because we can't get under that dot, but I'm just kind of illustrating mentally for you how you should look at it or how you should think about it. So there we go. We have that dot walked around halfway. Now I'm going to go back in and do the other side of every dot in that row. Meh. What does that mean? Sorry. Okay. 
Also, we do best. You what? Best, but sorry. Go slow. Slow and steady wins the race, babe. No, it doesn't. Not for me. No, you get you get too too uh. Excited. Yeah, just go slow. There's no rush. All right, and I'm on the last walk out on the left side. That's what we have. So I have an option here. I can continue to dot around again, or I can do another row of what's called walking out, making smaller dots around the larger dot. What I like to do, what I'm gonna do in this, this one is I'm gonna put more dots in here, and then I'm gonna come back around, and then I'm gonna do three around the final band. It's just what I'm gonna try and do. It's not, and what you wanna do is fine. There are no right, there's no right or wrong to this. I'm gonna use a bit of a smaller um, diameter dotting tool again, because I wanna make sure I can fit it in between. And again, I'm looking at the center of the stone as a guide to, to where I need to be with respect to left to right. looking good, right? Very simple, beautiful design, but it gives very, very nice, big visual impact. So I'm going to go for this gray green. What do you think? Simon, Simon, what? Nice, it's a piece of poop. It doesn't look like poop. Yeah, it does. It looks fantastic. No, it go it looks, slow. Looks like poop. No, it doesn't. He's so self-deprecating. I'm going to make the walk around. You know what? I don't like this. I want it to be bigger. I'm going to do the walk around dots here. Um, I'm going to follow the terracotta. I'll come out like this. Try and keep that perspective to the center dot. What are you doing, honey? Don't make those noises. so quiet in this house. You had to hear it before. I was going crazy. We have four kids here at Seven Hearts Farm. Sometimes five, depending on when my stepson comes around. And we have a horse. We have three dogs. How many chickens do we have right now? I don't know. I don't care. We lost count. Simon is not a fan of the chickens. Um, so here I have these these gray green dots now and I want to do a lot of a walk right around them and I'm actually going to make it um, give it like a little bit of a of a, uh, a pointed top to it to give it like almost a petal shape that comes around so what's the matter sweetie I have to showcase what Simon did he always says that, but you know what? He's really good at this. No, I'm not. You look stupid. I think it's beautiful. Nice job. You want to do another one? No. My okay. Only, my only good one that I have to make this one. I'm going to use the, the sunflower here. This is one he's done too, and he chose a light blue background for this one as his base color. Simon, I think they're beautiful. I think you're very talented. I think your work is amazing. You know, I started off good, and then I do what, do what I always do. I make a circle, like a like stupid. So, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm coming up. All right, goodbye, live video. It's not live, it's going on YouTube. Live video. All right, and I'm having trouble right now keeping these dots evenly apart. I am stunned at how quiet this house became.
These colors are so pretty. I love them. And I'm going to make a bunch of stuff. I love curating palettes and my Pinterest is probably half palettes that I've saved or that I've created myself from photos. I just love color combinations and figuring out different ways to impact design through color. You know, Sophie's here behind me. You want to say hi, Sophie? Hello, everybody. Uh, anyone who's taken my classes knows that Sophia is my beautiful assistant. And she, over time, has seriously become an absolute dotting professional. And she recently dotted her hydro flask water bottle, and it's gorgeous. And it's nice that she can carry around something that she created herself, which is very gratifying for anyone of any age. I'm going to hear some noise. Those are my puppies coming in from the swimming pool. chocolate lab can open doors, it can open sliding doors, it can unlock doors. And he's causing a scene outside. There's not a lot I can do about that. I'm going to say that's not my problem right now. All right, so I finished the yellow around there. I'm going to have a sip of my shake. And as you can see, I'm getting to the edge of my stone. I'm going to walk around again um, outside of these yellow walk-arounds. So I'm going to take a contrasting color. I think, again, I'm going to reserve this dark color for top dotting, and you'll see that in a moment, how we're going to do that. Um, I think I am going to go with a blue right now. Start with a blue. And here, I'll do it on this side so you can see what I'm doing. My nail broke. I had a manicure and my nail broke. Sometimes the paint gets goopy, and that's from being out in um, the air. And um, I'm finding that right now I should be mixing this. And I will keep water nearby when I'm painting to add a few drops just to keep the um, consistency as it dries out. It gets goopier and harder to work with and that is not what we want to do when we're trying to execute really perfectly round workable dots. So I got into dotting I think a year and a half ago. I um, was looking to paint some kindness rocks, some diversity rocks for a tree in our township. And um, I was frustrated by all the, the meanness and the antagonistic attitudes on the internet and around. And um, I wanted to do something to I don't know, help people or give them encouragement or hope or help them remember what it's all about. I think we've lost our way a little bit and um, as a country anyway. And um, I wanted to make colorful, happy stones for people to find and find some joy 
I just messed up there and I'm gonna leave it alone. Sometimes the more you mess with it, the worse it becomes. And um, I started painting rocks. And I've always been artistic. I've always been creative. I grew up in an um, artsy household and my mom was an artist and um, she oil painted, she was a sculptor. She, there was nothing she couldn't create or do. And um, so I thought, oh, I'll do it. Let me, let me try that. And I took a few landscaping rocks, stones from the backyard, and I, that looked smooth to me and a little bit, you know, intact as far as shape is concerned. And I was horrible at it absolutely horrible and I could not understand why I couldn't paint a nice rock so I started looking online and on Pinterest and I saw people were dotting rocks and I said oh that's easy I can do a dot and I found that it was not as easy as it looked I got very frustrated I made a few horrible looking stones and then I found YouTube videos and I started really following some master daughters, so to speak. And I realized that after a few practice tries and a, you know, a few disasters that you get better at it. And then I wanted to dot everything. And now I teach it and I love it again because you don't have to be a trained artist to dot you just need to have a few skills and a few hours of practice and you can make gorgeous designs on almost anything and they really are beautiful mandalas mandal is the Sanskrit word and it means unity of the universe or universe within and it's practiced in Hindu and um, Buddhist cultures um, mandala making mandalas are used for meditation and the encouragement of the opening of the third eye and they're beautiful and they're spiritual and colorful and all those things are uplifting. When you create, you are encouraging development of serotonin in your brain and dopamine. Um, so you get a feeling of well-being when you're creating. When you make something out of nothing, you are absolutely making yourself happy, even if you don't realize it. I'm going to do one more row of walk around dots out here. I think we will do terracotta. We'll do this color. And it gets harder because the rocks are convex, concave, convex. I don't know. They're one of those. And you need to lift up to see what you're doing on the other side there so you can stay even. And sometimes I like to go all the way down around the back, around my stones. But for our purposes, we'll just finish up with this section here. And I'm pretty sure um, what I'm probably going to wind up doing is some YouTube, a few YouTube tutorial classes and maybe some online classes. I teach here at my workshop. And I also teach at my township's rec department. And right now I'm studying, I'm really trying to find the perfect acrylic pour recipe so that I can, oh look, they're fighting on my video. Don't you dare, I have twins who are 12 and they have problems coexisting sometimes, which we all do. Um, now and then we have issues. But um, anyway, I'm going to make a few YouTube tutorial videos and also 
once I perfect the acrylic pour recipe, I'm going to be showcasing what we're up to with that and also offer a few workshops here at my home in New Jersey. We do live on a farm. The noise you hear is my dog licking his paws. It's gratifying, isn't it? Very satisfying. And what I use in my classes when I teach is I, giving a do I give a dotting kit and I use these manicure tools, which are really cheap, like I said. And um, because the other larger um, dotting tools are really expensive, relatively speaking, if you're just starting out or not sure it's something you want to participate in all the time. I um, have found flat bottom crochet hook sets do the trick wonderfully. They come in graduating sizes. They are wonderfully flat and round at the bottom. And they're relatively very cheap. And a great, great thing to use when you're just starting out I'm not sure if it's something you want to continue or invest in that said once you are dotting you really the um, the silicone ones I'm using right now are wonderful as are the stones a little expensive but they're worth it I'm coming around here with the terracotta I'm finishing up. I have a few more dots to to handle. Here we're gonna go. In the, we're in the home stretch as far as this triple walk around on this last outer dot. Am I getting there? School really can't start soon enough. I love my kids. Boy. It's been a long, great summer. And it's just time. Okay, so there we have it. And you can see how the design unfolds from the center. And the wonderful part about this is you make the design, you decide I've read that in Hindu culture, when you are making mandalas, that each concentric circle tells you what to do next. And once you master the techniques of this and the technical aspect of how to dot, and, and you can do it without thinking about it, you really do get absorbed in a, in a meditative state. And it's wonderful and it's really relaxing. So I'm gonna put a little something in here. Sometimes less is more, but as anyone who knows me knows, less is also a bore, especially when you're making beautiful, colorful mandalas. I'm going to put a yellow around here. If you're in Florida, I am so sorry about this hurricane. If you're in the Bahamas, I am so sorry. It's horrible. I worked hurricane on um, the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew in Miami in 1992. It was one of my first one of my first jobs. I worked for an insurance company, and they sent me down, and I stayed there for close to a year in Miami, helping people get back on their feet, writing checks, and assessing the damage. And it it's just it's just horrible what you take for granted, and a hurricane. We'll definitely remind you of that. So here we are. Some of my dots have dried. And what I'm gonna do now is, I already can take a look. Come back with me. Hi. Hi. 
Yay! Um, some of my dots have dried, so what I'm going to do is take... I'm gonna bring it back down so you can see what I'm doing. I do that too prematurely. I'm gonna dip into this very dark um, terracotta right here. I'm gonna do a really fat, one of my fattest um, manicure stylus. Where am I? Right there. It's a fatter, fatter um, bulb on the end of it. And I am going to dot within dots now and what I want to try to do I think I think in the center I'm definitely going to I'm going to swish this around I'm going to get it nice and juicy and I'm going to come around the center and go bam you see it's like a little chocolate dot I am going to now go into these sage colors that are around and I will dot within a dot there for some hard when you can't lean your, your hand on something and when it's not dry you can't really do that so let me try this and you can keep steady it makes it much easier I'm putting my wrist on on the bottle here I'm coming down I think this came out beautifully and I can't wait to post it and share it. And it's inspiring me to think about offering my own palette challenge. For my students. I'm going to do my yellow and the blue. We spent a lot of time down at the beach this summer and Sophia pointed out to me that one of her favorite color combinations on the houses was a French blue with beautiful butter yellow doors and I could not agree more with her. They're so pretty. It's like sun and sea. So there you go. Beautiful, right? You can do this too. If you're local, DM me, get in touch with me, and I'll set you up for one of my classes out of my um, studio here at the farm. I will be teaching here exclusively through January and in January I will start up again at the rec center in East Brunswick and um, Also, I believe I should be ready to start some acrylic pour workshops in October. So That's what I have for now. Thank you for joining me and um, I hope to do more of these soon. I appreciate all of your feedback any comments questions anything that you think I should know or remember when I'm showing these tutorials, please let me know. I'm open to everything. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye, Chicky.